Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm reviewing a smart switch which was supplied to be my Moomoobies. This is their icon. It actually came with this um, anti-static bag. So it has a switch and also it has a 433 megahertz remote. And the special about this switch that this is not the first time I'm reviewing a product which works with EVLink but not actually manufactured by Sonoff. I've uh, done a review of our garage opener and this is yet another product so it is a one gang low voltage smart switch and the companion app for this device is actually EVLink and I believe this is very similar to the Sonoff SV in terms of functionality uh, that also is a smart switch or one gang smart switch where you have access to the relays and it also works from low voltages so not mains so this one works from 5 volts using the micro usb but it also works from 7 to 32 volts ac dc uh, on this socket but then this also has an additional remote with it. So this is the 433 megahertz remote. This is quite a usual key fob that you probably have seen before or very similar key fobs. And actually the good thing about this one is it's not physically paired with the receiver. So if you happen to have a different key fob, let's say with multiple buttons that you're using it for something, you can pair this switch with that key fob as well. But anyway, in the package you are receiving both of them. And as I said, this is a low voltage device. So both the supply voltage is low. And on the other side, we have access to the relay contact. So if I flip it around, you can see that we have a common, a normally open and a normally closed connection. So I think this device is going to be ideal for a garage door opener when you need to, you know, for a short period of time, short out the, what is it, the common, and the normally open connection so these so the right two connections and then the garage motor will start so it would either go up or it would go down and you need to provide this uh, signal or this input for a short period of time but the good thing about this one that it also supports inching so setting that up is going to be really really easy some of you are probably going to ask this unit doesn't have an input so if you are planning to use it as a garage door opener this device wouldn't be able to tell you whether the garage door is open or closed. By the way, the relay is rated for 250 volts and 10 amps. So if you are planning to switch any mains device with that, this is the maximum ratings that you can go for. The unit doesn't have a box. It came in two of these uh, anti-static bags. Also in the box, you are getting an instruction manual. It it is a small leaflet type and it comes in two languages one of them is Chinese and the other one is English there is not a lot that you need to know about this device I mean it tells you about how you can power it you can use the uh, the terminal connectors uh, for a DC or an AC input and you can also use the micro USB and then it goes into the settings and how you set it up in the EVLink application it works exactly the same way as any other Sonoff device so there's not going to be anything special about that. Probably the only extra step that you need to do is, as I said, the RF key fob is not paired with the device. So you have this button, which also uh, works as a local switch. And if you press it for more than five seconds, there is a blue LED here, which is going to light up. And that's when the remote is in learning mode. So you just press the button on the remote and then the remote gets paired with the device. As simple as that. I've already done the pairing of this device. As you can see, it uh, shows up in my EVLink application as a simple switch and I can operate it here. As you can see, we have a feedback on the next to the relay. Actually, the inching is already configured on this uh, device. So as you can see, when I turn it on, it automatically turns off after I think two or three seconds. And I'm actually making use of the micro USB input because I'm powering this from a power bank. It's not, uh, probably it's not ideal for battery operation, but if you have a fairly big power bank it will probably run for a couple of days but that's not something that i have tested and i've already shown you the basic operation so you have the app you can control the device from here you also have a button on the device so you can control it from there it works just like the small button on the son of basic and you also have a remote so yeah you have three ways to operate it by the way, since I talked about pairing, I just want to reiterate that it is really easy. When you turn it on, it, the status LED starts flashing. 
uh, meaning that you know, since it hasn't been paired, so you just click on the plus button and you follow the on-screen instructions. So let's go back to the device settings. If I go to the device details screen, it looks and feels just like a son of basic or let's say a son of mini. There is one gang, so there is one big switch face. And if you click, then the device turns on. And then of course, because it's uh, set to inching, then the device also turns off. Let me turn off the inching so we can see how it works in, uh, in non-inching mode. So save, back. So you operate it like this, now it's on and you press it again, now it's off. And of course it works across all the input surfaces. So now I turn it on via the app and I can turn it off from the key fob as well. And let's look at the main features on the, on the device. We have the schedule where you can specify the hour and the minute and then which day of the week, whether the device should either turn on or turn off and you can have multiple of these schedules. Each of these schedules is going to be either a turn on or a turn off event. And you also have the timer. So let's say if I turn on and I set a timer for probably something like, let's say a minute. And then after one minute, I want this to turn off. So this is like a, you know, a one minute sleeper that you manually activate. Then after one minute, oh, that was quick after one minute the device turns off. So this is like the sleep functionality on the TV that you activate manually each time. And you also have the loop timer where you can also set some uh, reoccurring events. So for example, every 30 minutes the device should turn on or you can set this alternate cycle where you can specify, for example, here that for 24 minutes the unit is on and for I don't know, 40 minutes, the unit is off. So it's like from a, I don't know, like a valve pump, which needs to turn on and off uh, periodically. And then you just enable it and set the date and the time when this logic should start running. So I'm going to turn it off now. So these are the three main features that you are getting with pretty much almost any device in the EV-Link app. So next, let's look at the settings. I click on the three dots. You can change the name of the device. As you can see that there is a firmware update. Actually, it came with a firmware update. Uh, so I think it came with 3.1. So I just upgraded to 3.5. So it definitely works. You can assign the location of this device, so which room it is. You can share the device with other EV-Link users. You can create them into a group. So you can group them, with, as you can see, with other son of devices as well. You can enable LAM control, so this is the local control if the device uh, loses active internet connection. By the way, the reason the, uh, the red LED is flashing from time to time, because it doesn't draw an awful lot of current, so my power bank is you know, trying to auto off from time to time. So I'm just pressing a button on it just to wake it up all the time. So again, it's not really ideal for power bank because they auto turn off. You can have additional uh, notification on the screen as well when this device is being operated. This could be useful if you are giving the key, key fob to someone else and at least you know when it's being operated using the key fob. You can see logs. Again, could be useful if you're sharing the device so you can see which user turn it on and off. Next, you can specify the power on state. So which state the device should come on when it receives power and then you know, connects to the internet and then the inching setting that I talked about. So if you are planning to use this as a garage door opener, you would enable it and set it to, I think probably one second is going to be enough. So when it turns on, after one second, it will automatically turn off. I'm not going to save it right now. And the rest of it is just the device ID and you know device details. So if you have seen a Son of Mini or a Son of Basic, it operates exactly like that. It has and it has exactly the same features as that. The main difference here, just to reiterate, that on the output, you are not getting the main switched, but you can switch any other lower voltage or you can use it as a dry contact as well. And the last thing that I wanted to check is just to check what is supported in the scenes. Because it's a simple switch, I think it's going to be very uh, simple, but let's check anyway. So I'm going to create a scene and check on the triggers. So smart device, Mumubis, and yes, 
we can create a scene whenever this device gets turned on or turned off. Of course, that means the key fob or the button or the app as well. And when we look at the action side, what we can do with this device if something happens in the sort of evening ecosystem. So again, I'm selecting smart device and movies. And of course, we can turn the device on and off. So we can have another device in the EVLink application when something happens with that, that can also remotely operate this switch. So again, even in the scenes, it operates and behaves just like a son of basic. And to be honest, this is all you need to know about this single gang low voltage or safe voltage uh, smart switch. If you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave some link in the video description. I believe they would be running a promotion shortly as well. So if I get any additional info, I'm going to put it into the video description. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.